Hey! What's going on, Mech Army? Welcome uh, to the Child of Mecha live stream. I am your host, Tim, the one and only Child of Mecha. Uh, it's Monday evening. Hi! How? My light turned off. Son of a bitch. I hate that light. We'll do without it. Uh, how are you guys? I'm doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. Um, welcome! We're going to be working on the GWC build tonight. <clears throat> <coughs> hey. hey. Uh, and we're going to... We're going to do something a little bit different tonight. We're going to take a, kind of a hard right on this thing. Uh, and we're going to work on... Uh, we're going to work on the shield tonight. Um, I was just... I was kind of getting... Kind of getting a little tired of just working on the legs, the legs, the legs, nothing but the legs. Hey, more legs. Oh, we'll throw in a knee or something. Eh. Getting boring working on that. So, uh, pulled out the shield. We're going to work on this a little bit tonight. Try to get some ideas for this thing. I think I have a pretty good idea of what I want to do. But, um, it's always about execution, right? It's always about execution. So, uh, we're going to jump on this thing here in a few minutes. And uh, see what we can see what we can kind of do with this thing, right? Um, so, uh, if for some strange reason, you did not... Uh, see this afternoon uh, afternoon's episode of the stream check it out I cleaned <laughs> I van a freaking white over here uh, but yeah so I cleaned up literally everything in this place except for the desk and stuff like that um, so what I did was I uh, actually recorded a little video um, for uh, the tutorials and stuff like that, um, try to record actually my YouTube channel intro video. Fancy, right? Um, try to record that, and then uh, got that re you know recorded. Everything looked good uh, as far as I could tell. Got it over onto the computer and started editing it, and it, the background looked like a bomb had gone off. Um, it was terrible. It was not worthy of uh, your time uh, or my time at that point. So, um, this weekend, basically put the nose to the grindstone and cleaned the hell out of this studio here. Um, still a little ways to go. Um, I'm currently sorting my parts, <laughs> all of my myriad of parts boxes. Um... And uh, I bought some bins. I was actually able to go out today and buy a few bins. Um, and uh, basically, I'm now in the middle of sorting parts and stuff like that. Um, and uh, just this whole place is cleaned up. Uh, obviously, this shelving unit here is completely organized and clean. You know, you got model kits. You've got uh, this right here is a decal bin for all the decals and stuff that I have. Uh, this bin right here is uh, the shelved uh, Gelgoog that we were working on previously. But it's right here, ready to be brought back out and worked on again. This whole shelf here is nothing but uh, spare parts and these four bins right here. And then up here, we've got some other smaller bins, which is our spare parts. And these are kind of... You know, your primo spare parts, right? The ones that we really kind of want to keep track of and maybe use for something. Um, and then you got, you know, your miscellaneous kits and stuff like that. Deep Striker, right right, right there. Got some hard graph kits over here and stuff. So uh, this is all cleaned. Um, the shelving unit behind the computer, that's all cleaned up. The... Um, <laughs> the bomb of kits that was on the floor in front of there, all gone, organized, the whole nine yards. Um, put up another floating shelf over here above uh, the small workbench. Man, this is this place is looking good. Um, so uh, I think definitely once this gets cleaned, uh, maybe a studio kind of tour or something like that, maybe that type of video uh, gets made up so you guys can see really and kind of get an idea of the space that I'm working in because um, it's it's a decent size. It's not super big, but it's, it's respectable. Let's put it that way. It's efficient. 
It's efficient. I love efficiency. Um, so yeah, so that's what I've been working on this weekend, actually, is just, <laughs> just uh, trying to get a grip on this place. Yeah. Hanron says, oh, you got the Deep Striker. Dude, I've had, I've had that Deep Striker, actually. Um, I actually pre-ordered that Deep Striker last year uh, from USA Gundam Store. Yeah. Last year. Or what was it? Was it last year or the year before it came out? I don't even remember. It was the year it came out. I pre-ordered the damn thing. Yeah. Crazy, right? Um, but, as you can see, kind of... This area here, the desk area, this shelving unit, for the most part, still needs to be cleaned. Um, I got the, the crap kind of cleared off of here. Um, definitely need to organize this shelving unit, and then obviously I, need, I desperately need to clean the desktop bench area here, because it just... I... If you watched this, more, uh, this afternoon stream... I couldn't even find tools that I needed. So, yeah, it's bad at this point. Um, so, still a work in progress. I think another couple nights in this place will be spick and span and, and ready to ready to go. Um, and then, uh, hell, who knows? That'll probably be one of the first videos that I release um, on uh, good old YouTube. Hey. <laughs> um, all right, so real quick before we get to start, uh, let's get some business out of the way. Rocking the the airdrop uh, chibi this uh, this this uh, today. Uh, if you want to get one of these, hit up www.childamaca.com. Hit the store button up at the top. You will find this shirt, many more hats, prints, all sorts of other cool stuff in there. Uh, they make great presents. And uh, if you are interested in any of the tools and materials that we are going to be working with here tonight, definitely hit up that Amazon link below here on Twitch and YouTube. That side, if you're watching on Facebook. Um, I do get a bit of a commission based off the stuff that you buy, but it does not increase the price for you. Yeah, it does not do that. Mm -mm, nope. Um, but it does go to help me out, um, help out the stream and all of our other endeavors that we are going to be embarking on here in the very, very near future. Um... And then last but not least, obviously, if you are in need of kits, paints, uh, tools, uh, accessories, whatever, Mecha Decal Sheets 1 and 2, those are shipping now. Those are both in stock. Hit up our good friends right down here, USA Gundam Store. Adam and the fine folks down there will definitely have what you need. Now, uh, let's get caught up in the chat, and then we're going to get to work, okay? So first, and uh, first, we're going to check in with the uh, Mecha Army Facebook group, okay? Uh, because Robert Cottrell is over there. He says, hey, Tim, what's going on, Robert? Uh, he also says, had your show on at work, but had a lot of work to do. Uh, had to ship 120 packages. Whoa. Hey, man. You know what? At least you're keeping busy. That's the important thing, right? Yeah. Um, Wilson Alanea, he's also over there in the Mecha Army Facebook group. If you have not uh, followed Wilson, uh, Wilson Arts, uh, is his, uh, is, uh, is his Facebook page, man, w w what's wrong with you? I highly suggest that you do because Wilson is a freaking master when it comes to weathering. Um, it's just, it's insane. The man's talent when it comes to weathering a model, everything looks super realistic, like big time. So go follow Wilson. But he says, hey, Tim, what's up? Hope everything is fine there. Dude, um, everything's as good as can be, right? I think we're all just kind of making do, right? We're trying to survive this thing. And, and um, you know what? I could be a whole lot worse off than I am right now, honestly. Um, yeah, I'm not in the greatest of spots. But hey, you know what? Who is? I'm, gonna, I'm not going to roll over on this thing. I'm going to fight tooth and nail. I'm going to kick this thing in its ass, right? Like we all should. Yeah. All right. So let's get caught up uh, on the chat in uh, on YouTube and uh, Twitch and the Facebook page and all that good stuff. So here, let's let's rewind it back. Let's pull it back here. Whoo, boy. Okay, so um, William Williams has a question. We have a question. We'll start it off with that. Here we go. He says, how do you decide what extra parts from a model are worth keeping? Dude, all of them are worth keeping. 
Every single one. Polycaps, the, the crap that's left over on the runners, yeah, clip them out and put them in a bin because you never, never know what you're going to need. You keep everything. Everything. Not the runners, but everything else. You keep. You put them in a bin and you save them for a rainy day. This, this is bin one. Bin one. See how it's full? Here, let me show you. Ugh. See, that is, look at that. That's, yeah, all scrapped model parts and stuff, right? And this is, this is, uh, this is the crap bin, so to speak. This is the bin that is probably not going to see the light of day very often. Still some really good parts in here, don't get me wrong. But, I like to categorize my parts. Um, so this is kind of the, the C box, right? And then, um, up here, these little guys right here, these are kind of your B grade. Good, but not great for every kind of circumstance. And then down here, this stuff right in here is like the cream of the crop. Uh, the purple bin is nothing but our resin greeblies that we made. Um, the teal bin off right there are kind of your A grade parts, your, your little nice little cool little greeblies. Um, so that's kind of where um, I, you know, how I separate things. Um, and then let's see, these two bins right here, um, these are Bandai campaign parts that I got like either for super, super cheap or from like GBWC last year. Um, so this bin, this bin right here, which is full of campaign parts, I got that for uh, five bucks at a my local hobby store that closed. And then the the bin over here, uh, right next to it, is all the ones that I got at GBWC last year. Like I just gimme, 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 right? Um, and they were just throwing them on the table like like Santa Claus, just throwing presents to the kids. Um, so I got all that. And uh, so that's kind of how I sort kind of my parts and stuff. But no, you keep every single part, every single one, because you never know when it's going to become useful. You never know. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's see. Uh, Kenneth Sim also has a question. Hey. He says, when, uh, when will we... Uh, when we'll be able to see the street, uh, Deep Striker in action. <laughs> Not anytime soon, let's put it that way. Um, that's a big old kit. That's a big old kit. And that's one that I don't know if I would ever do for like GBWC or not. So that may have to wait. May have to wait. Uh, Julius Dembski wants to know, is that a 160th uh, Rick Dom I see on the shelf? Yeah, man. That's been here for a while. Yep, that right there. Uh, that one right there is the uh, Astre Noir High Res that I won at uh, the Old Dominion Open. And that is this brown one here. Everybody wants to know. That's the Mechanic Core uh, Zero Store, uh, or the Kasi, Psy, or whatever it's called from Hathaway's Flash. Um, that's their 1100 version. That was like one of the first Mechanic Core um, <clears throat> models that they put out. So. Yeah, that's all fun back there. All fun. Uh, let's see here. Steven Eckert is over there on Facebook. He says, uh, I would love a tour, Kim. Uh, Tim, keeping my spirits alive and going. Dude, I'm trying. Hey, if I can keep your spirits going, or if I can keep my spirits going, then hey, who knows, man. But that's good to hear, Steven. I, I appreciate that, brother. Just keep watching, man. Having fun with us interacting right um Henry says i need to get some proper frames so i can hang some of my gundam posters do it do it <laughs> uh bill says uh, tim sent you a link on facebook messenger for you to add the angle guide so julius and maybe others can pick it up oh word okay rocking let's see what we've got uh you did it on facebook oh you might have sent it to the other the other account See, I have, I have two accounts, you guys. I got one, like, for my personal side, and then I got one for uh, m the modeling side. 
and that's what I use the most is the the modeling one. So um, I will get to that as soon as I possibly can, Bill. It might be after the stream though. So be patient, guys. Uh, Greg Blair says, "What up, Tim? What's going on, Greg?" Uh, Brandon Cobb's over there on Facebook as well. He says, honestly, I need to organize my workbench. I've been so busy with my current whip that everything looks like uncontrolled chaos. Dude, <laughs> trust me, I know the I know the feeling very, very well. Especially, especially rocking two two projects at once. <sighs> Forget about it. Forget about it. Let's see. Uh, uh, Steven Eckert's over there uh, as well on Facebook. He says, waiting on my stimulus check, and I'm gifting myself with a shirt. It's awesome. I like it. I like where your head's at, Steven. Um, let's see. Greg Blair says, I am bad with that. I keep all of my spare parts. Dude, yeah, do it. Uh, Brandon says, my parts bin is tiny compared to that. Well, I also have twenty year, almost 20 years in this thing, so that's basically like 20 years of spare parts in there, you know? Um, <clears throat> Persistent Turtle, Mr. Lucas, he says, I keep all the runners as well. I don't need all the runners. I just clip the parts off, save those, right? Sort them out. Bada boom, bada bing. Uh, Kenneth Sims says, can't imagine how much that box of parts total cost. Dude, I don't want to know at this point. Trust me. I would probably vomit if I knew, especially in my current state. I'd be done. Uh, let's see. Uh, Hendren says, I only have a half bin so far. Hey, man. It's, it's just good to have, you know? Uh, Sam L says, my parts box, uh, got thrown away, so I am restarting. Oh, heartbreaker. My Astra had a ton of good spares. Uh, Lucas over there on, uh, YouTube says, feel bad throwing, throwing all the plastic away. Save the turtles. That's very true. You can always recycle them, though. Uh, Greg Blair says, sorry for your loss, Sam. Yeah, for real, for real. Um, Kenneth Sims says, anyone have had buffering issues on YouTube? Anybody? Uh, YouTube says we have an excellent connection, so I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Travis Chaos, he's over there on YouTube. He says, hello, everyone. What's up, Travis? Uh, hey, Jody's over here, too. Perzaku girl. She says, hey, y'all. What's going on, Jody? Good to see you again. Um, Mr. Gumpling Uruguay, Javier is over there as well. He says, got a little late. Uh, got hooked up uh, back on racing sims with F1 2019, but I was listening to the stream while racing. Hey, whatever it takes, right? Uh, Radiant Snow. Our dealership closed temporarily because of the corona today. Now I have more free time for model building. It's a silver lining, right? Trust me, I, I know the feeling. Um, Handron says, uh, hell yeah, the P Bandai shirt, once that check comes in, there you go. Gumpel Your Gray, what about keeping runners to make plastic putty? Uh -uh, no. I the plastic, the the sp sprue glue or sprue goo as it's called, uh, uh I don't do it. I do i I'm not sold on it. Um I don't like it. I don't I would never suggest it because it literally takes days to dry and cure. Just use super glue. It's so much quicker and better. Because if you use if you use if you use that that sprue goo in like more than just a surface amount, it's going to melt your plastic or at very least potentially warp it, right? Um I don't want to risk that. And I sure as shit don't want to wait 24 hours or 48 hours or 72 hours for it to cure. Ain't nobody got time for that. Um, but uh, dude, just use super glue. Just toss those runners, get you know, recycle them or whatever, and uh, use super glue. It's the perfect filler. The perfect filler. Um, let's see. Gumpel Uruguay says I tried once, but I always end up throwing the runners away. There you go. Uh, Bill, Mr. Ruchlam says, uh, the Melted Runners is only useful if you don't paint. Otherwise, Quick Type is far better. That too. Uh, hi, Craig. He's over there on uh, YouTube. What's going on, man? He says, hey, Tim. Julius Dembski's over there. What's up, Sarge? Good to see you. He says, I only have about a handful of spare parts. Some is better than none. 
Um, Foodie Bay always over there as well. Greg Blair says, I think I may be glutton for punishment. I am putting all the recommended decals on my Banshee Verka. I only have one leg left. I don't want to do it, but I am committed. Well, commitments, uh, commitment to the, to the decals is very important. Very, very important. All right, so um, let's uh, let's switch to camera two because I, I was like I said I've been rustling around in the parts bin and I found something that's kind of wild that I want to show uh, you guys and we're gonna get zoomed in straight off the bat but we're gonna um, camera two here right now. All right, and there we go. So I was rummaging around in um, like I said the parts bin today. And just all, you know, through, again, almost 20 years of parts in there, um, I came upon this little gem. This was one of my very, very first attempts at um, customization in terms of a, a Zeta uh, head unit, right? And uh, you can kind of see the direction that we went there. We almost kind of went Macross helmet type uh, look. You know, we shaved off the mohawk and everything. We filled in the gaps on the sides here. We elongated the the brim right here, right? Um, and, uh, you know, put some little uh, roundy bits there. And this is all kind of filled here with... Uh, epoxy putty and all that good stuff and a lot of these details are filled and sanded and uh smoothed out i even tried to look at this i even tried to scribe some lines in here and those are just a mess um but you you have to imagine this is probably at least uh, at least 15 years old um if not more at this point um Ruslam says tim you got a question oh i saw i saw we'll get to it in a second um Luis, don't worry. We'll get to it. Um, but I kind of wanted to show you this this little guy because I don't know if I'm ever going... I'll probably never finish this because this is this head right here is kind of too far gone uh, in terms of quality and stuff. I don't know if I would w even want to finish this off. Um, but it kind of goes to show you the progress that you can make in that amount of time as well. You know, I even look at this. I even did like little brass uh, tubes in there for um, the uh, the head Vulcans and everything. And uh, this was just kind of a really cool blast from the past. I even tried to use like a little, a little bead in there to create a stupid little part or whatever. But yeah, so this just, like I said, just kind of shows you, um, you know, progress. Because it's all about progress, right? And um, even if you start off at this, you can progress a pretty long way, right? So that little guy, I think he's staying up there next to uh, next to the light board and everything like that. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Chris Pab says, what head is slash was that? That was actually a Zeta Master Grade 1.0 head that I started to... Uh, um, modify back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So let's get caught, caught back up. Cause I know Luis had a question. He says, uh, let's see. We have a question. He says, what's the difference between Tamiya, uh, polyester putty and Tamiya quick type putty? Well, uh, Tamiya polyester putty is, uh, also a two type or two part putty um but it's like uh it's almost like a 10 to 1 mix ratio because you have this big tube of like uh toothpaste looking you know polyester putty and then you have a little vial of hardener right um so think of it almost in terms of like bondo if you've ever worked on a car or um used anything like that that's basically the same thing it's polyester putty um and uh it, it's it's somewhat more viscous than the Tamiya quick type. Um, so you can, you can do a few more things with it. I personally am not a huge fan of it, but that doesn't mean that, 
um, people can't get wonderful results from it. Um, I've seen people do some amazing things with it, especially in like Hobby Link or uh, on Hobby Japan and the old Dengekis and model graphics and stuff like that. Um, they've done uh, some really, really, really interesting shapes and stuff. Um, so that's basically the difference. The where to me a quick type. Obviously, you've seen us work on uh, stream with that stuff. It is more like a clay type of consistency where polyester putty when you mix it um is more uh more like a toothpaste like a very very thick toothpaste right um and it doesn't um it doesn't harden to the consistency like to me a quick type does it is a bit on the softer side still um uh, but you can still work it you can still sand it and sculpt it uh, scribe it, whatever, right? You can basically tool the tool it as well as the as the epoxy putty can. So that's basically the difference. So hopefully that helps. Zerokai says, I think I should uh, should have used polyester putty for the scratch built part. Gotcha. Uh, Chris Pabs is over there on YouTube. What's up, Pabby? Uh, Superset Five. He says, Macross. Don't you mean Robotech? Ha 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 ha. And then Sorvan says, Don't make me get text to deal with you, right? I agree. Um, learned my lesson the hard way. Uh, let's see. Julius uh, says that's a good look. That's a good look for the head, right? Oh, for the old Zeta, yeah. Um, let's see. Handron says uh, that looks nice, regardless. Looks like a Zeta Plus. And I was kind of going for almost that look because I was always I was inspired by the model graphics. Um, um, one of the model graphics issues where they focused solely. Um, on Zeta Plus variants and stuff. That was the, one of the best model graphics I've ever seen in my life. I still have my issue and everything, and it's just great. Um, but they've they've um, had varying, you know, head designs and stuff like that. So I wanted something different, but yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Handron says, uh, prime it and it will look more appealing. Trust me, it won't. <laughs> The angles are so uneven. The plating is terrible. The scribing is even worse. It's it's more of a memento at this point. If I wanted something to look like that, I just redo it and and just do it better, right? Um, let's see. Chris Pab says, "Damn, blast from the past." Yeah, big time. Um, Henry says, "Poly putty is much quicker." Uh, yeah, from what I remember. It's been a while since I've used it, to be honest with you. Uh, Ultraman Donna says, yes, I've used Bondo. Which one is better? Probably for modeling, to me, a poly putty. Um, just, just saying, you know? Uh, Chris Pab says, are we talking about the poly putty in cans? Uh, well, the to me, a poly, polyester putty comes in like a squeezy tube, almost like an old school um, um, tube of toothpaste, right? So... Yeah, Chris Pab says um, if yes, Poly Putty is less hot than Bondo. True, uh, the thermic reaction isn't as severe. True, true. Um, Sorvan says I was watching Kawaguchi use polyester putty on the on that Zaku he's working on. I think it's probably better for small applications than epoxy putty. Probably, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ultraman Dyna, Mr. Louis says um, so. The polyester putty is softer. Um, probably just a bit. Yeah. Uh, there she is, Tex Marquise Armida. She says, I hear everything. So do I. Imagine that. Um, Chris Pab says, I wouldn't say softer. It cures slower than Bondo, but there's less risk of expanding due to heat and messing with uh, the other plastics. Gotcha. Um, Ultraman Dyna, gotcha. Thanks, Chris, and thanks, Tim. You are welcome, sir. Uh, Kenneth Sims says, polyester putty uh, are more powdery after dried and sanded. Gotcha. Uh, there's Julio, Mr. Clip and Nums, yer. Uh, Gump of Uruguay, Mr. Javier says, uh, there is no way to revive one of those poly putty tubes, right? I have one that bought years ago and it was already dry. Yeah, no, it's just toss it and buy a new one, dude. Um, Chris Pab says, Tim's, there's a Tamiya epoxy putty in tubes, but in Japan, there's poly putty in cans that's two part like Bondo. So I wasn't sure what we were talking about. Oh, my. I didn't know that there was po epoxy putty in tubes either. Um, no, the the polyester putty. It's like, um, it, it's almost like it's like in one of those me those you know metallic um, uh, toothpaste tubes. Uh, so think um, 
Chris, think um, the Tamiya white putty, but that's the polyester putty. And then it comes with like a little vial of hardener and it's like a 10 to one type of deal. So yeah, that's basically what we're talking about. So anywho, all right, let's get into it. All right, so we're going to be, like I said, working on the shield tonight, right? Now, <clears throat> um, I know there was some talk. I think Bill had said uh, he wanted uh, me to go with the uh, angular uh, shield here. This one, um, this guy. We are not going in that direction. Sorry, Bill. Uh, what we are doing is we are going in this direction. <clears throat> yes, the uh, GM Sniper 2 shield. This is the way that we're going here. Um, this is going to be the uh, the new RX shield for us. Um, simply because, like I said, we're remixing this whole thing and we're doing things differently. So, this is, this is going to be it. This is going to be our shield right here. Yep. And this is what we're going to try and accomplish tonight. Oh, yeah. Right about there. That's essentially what we're going to be working on here. Um, so, uh, yeah, we've got to be super, super careful with this cross um, because this is from the 1.5. Uh, Gundam 1.5 shield, and uh, as you can see, it kind of tapers from down, way down from here, all the way up to this here. So we've got to basically remove a lot of material, make this thing flat, and then uh, kind of bend it around this form, and uh, kind of just basically make this thing. Um, form to the to the curvature of the shield but this is this is what we're doing folks and i really like this look i really really do um because what we're going to have is obviously the you know the um little circular details up here at the top we'll have the um you know the old school uh verka the white base um um designation and everything up at the top there and you know white red all that good stuff um what we'll probably do is to outline scribe a lot of this um and get that kind of outline shape um that we had for uh the normal shield we'll probably even have to plate up a um a, uh, a border around here to kind of build that up similar to uh, the Verka shield and the old school you know Federation shields and stuff like that but uh, this is this is going to be our direction this is where we're going with this and I dig it I dig it a lot all right so uh, first things first eyes on and we've got to we've got to work on this thing We've got to start tapering uh, this down so this is flat, right? So you can kind of see there how it just tapers up. That's exactly what we do not want at this point. We want this thing to be as thin as it possibly can. So we need to take off pretty much everything from that break point down. So all of this all of that needs to go away so uh this this is going to be a challenge because we need to uh be extremely extremely high precision with this yeah uh juan says uh and this is a great question juan Thank you for uh, asking it. We have a question. Juan says, why don't you just carve out the shield uh, to implant it? Trust me, I was right there with you. Um, if we did that, this is the thing. <clears throat> this part here uh, obviously pops off. So you've got a one millimeter, we've got a lower level here, right? So if we, if we um, cut this out, 
you still have that that bit part over top, right? There's not much meat back here, unfortunately. Um, it's hidden, obviously, by all this back here. But we need to also come up with a mounting solution uh, to mount it to the just a backpack that we'll be using. Um, because I want the um, the just a, the arm, the movable arm on this to be able to um, manipulate the shield so it can come out and then fold back up. Be good if it's on camera. Uh, to come out and then fold back up into kind of this position here, right? So it's probably not going to work that way. And also, too, the other thing, uh, like I said, since this is one one millimeter lower here we'd have to be super super careful with uh grinding everything away and carving that out um and like i said there's so much kind of internal stuff here it just uh it would not be the greatest in the world so what we're going to do is we're going to cut this down flush mount that uh bend these over the curvature because right now um, that's kind of what we're looking at, right? Uh, but we'll bend these over the curvature. Uh, by the time we get it down to this, we should be able to, to bend it around. If worse comes to worst, we can heat it up and then it'll conform uh, pretty nicely. So that's kind of the plan at this point. But Juan, that's a great question, buddy. Great question. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Frankie, he just came in at the right time. True. Fetty symbol on a GM command shield. <laughs> Nut, right? Uh, actually, this is the GM Sniper 2 shield, but thank you for playing. Uh, William Wilms says, are you going to use a heat gun with the cross laying on the round on a rounded glass? Um, I hadn't thought of that, but that's a option. Sure. Um, Let's see. Hendren says, you can always build up some meat via styrene, creating a bed for it underneath the shield. Um, we could. We could. The Another thing that I was um, contemplating was to um, basically just glue tapered styrene strip down to the shield and then building that up with epoxy putty. And then that way we can just kind of basically sculpt our own at that point another option but since we have this uh this cross here i did well use it right so that's what we'll be doing um let's see uh dee -dee 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 -dee. juan says i knew how to do some shit like that but that's how uh i would it uh i would it it would be crazy yeah no it trust me this is going to be an interesting con uh customization let's put it that way um, Julius Dempsey has a question. Sarge, okay, let's reload the button. There we go. <clears throat> Tim says, uh, or Julius says, Tim, would making a resin cast of it help just in case it breaks? Um, it would probably, it probably would, but at this point, uh, I wouldn't be able to work it right now. I'd have to make a cast and everything literally right now. Um, so that probably wouldn't wouldn't be great right this second and plus i don't i don't see it um as being a huge huge uh challenge honestly uh it just it's going to be precision that's all it takes um <clears throat> excuse me frankie says what about heating it up we'll probably have to heat it up um depending on how thin we can get it if we can get it pretty thin we might be able to wrap it uh without heating it so we'll see we'll see uh, Charles Dodge over there on YouTube, he says, question. Okay. There it is. Delayed. Uh, why not sand the shield's profile onto the back of the cross? So, that's... Let's see. Because that that's kind of what it looks like, right? And if we just curved it, you'd still have these flat sections right here. And I'm not a huge fan of that. So <clears throat> I would rather these points. And if you looked at, where's the shield? Where'd that shield go? Here it is. 
here's the original um, 1.5 shield here, right? And obviously you have, this is really thick material here. There's the back, here's the bottom edge, and um, the, sh the cross slotted right onto this peg here. And then there's a little section right down there that it catches into, right? Now, <clears throat> the actual shield cover just slots right over that, just like that. And then you can kind of see how that profile, how it looks in the end, right? So that cross starts down at the, at the tips, the top and the bottom, and then just tapers up to the central point, right? Same thing with the sides. Starts at zero, tapers up to that central point. So I want to recreate that, but in a curved fashion, right? So that's why we're going to um, sand this down or grind it down or whatever. Um, and uh, that's kind of how we're going to get this thing to conform, right? And trust me, guys, I have no doubt that we can pull this off. No doubt whatsoever. Um, it's just... It's just um, being precise, right? And we did that. We did that on the uh, the early show today. We were um, trying to get this damn cover off here, and it, there we go. And um, like I said, precision was the name of the game on the early show. Um, doing where is it? Doing this, right? This is for the SD build off that we did, and this is what we worked on today. We had to cut a four millimeter ring off the bottom here, and um, the shorter piece looks a lot better. But we had to precision cut this thing. We had to wrap tape around the bottom, make sure that that was um, four, exactly four millimeters from the bottom, scribe a line in there and then that way it, it gave the saw that we used a groove to ride in and cut this perfectly um we just did some finish sanding on one of our grinding plates high precision that's what it's about that's all it's about at this point right so that's what this thing's going to be about too just precision that's all nothing crazy it's just tedious that's it i think we can take tedious hell yeah um <clears throat> Rusam, Mr. Bill's got a question as well. We have a question. Yeah, lots of questions tonight. Uh, he says, and this, what, and this, what I had meant earlier, why not make this more angular, like how the calf looks? Uh, wouldn't that be more co a, co a cohesive aesthetic? Um, I honestly, I don't think so. Um, because you have to think about what the GM Sniper 2 looks like, right? The GM Sniper 2 is 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 quite angular. It's a Fetty suit, right? Um, and honestly, this particular shield here, this GM Sniper 2 shield, is really just one of my favorites. So that's why we're using it. I'm just simply particular to this this. I'm particular to this particular shield. That's probably not great English, but whatever. Um, <laughs> Charles Dodge on YouTube, he says, No, I mean, if you sand the back of the cross so that it has a complex concave profile, uh, you wouldn't have to try and bend it. It would also get rid of most of the bottom angular part you don't like. Ah, yeah. Well, see, the problem is still to taper the, the points, right? Even if you were to sand that curve in there, this way, right? You'd still have these high points over here because these would still be these would still be flat. So we they need to curve, plain and simple. They need to curve around this thing. So, yeah. Freddie says one of my favorites. Now I know Tim's my real dad. Aww, son. No. <clears throat> Give me the oh, oh yeah, Frankie. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start cutting this thing. Um, now, like I said, we're just going to start clipping away 
just uh, at low hanging fruit, right? Just like that. And we'll probably have to pull out the Dremel to really get this thing uh, into a place where we really want it. And I'm not sure if the mini Dremel is going to do the trick. We might have to pull out the big boy. Because I, I I'm probably going to want some fairly high speeds to grind this plastic down pretty well, you know? So that may be what we have to do. We're just taking a, we're just nibbling it back just a little bit at a time. We don't want to go full crazy, um, you know, cut into this thing because then you're just asking for trouble, honestly. So uh, we're just nibbling away at this point. There, and that's starting to look a lot better. <clears throat> mm, excuse me. Good, looking good. All these cuts are really lining up pretty good with where we need it to be. And then, like I said, we have this, um, we have the flat. And, uh, angle break in here so we can follow that once we um, once we pull the Dremel out and stuff so what I'm gonna do is switch off to to me and nippers just to get really in tight here where that uh, where that circular receiver hole was and now we're getting into kind of the thinner portion of this so we don't want to take off too too much <clears throat> we'll let the uh, we'll let the Dremel handle a little bit more of this but that's at least a pretty decent start I'm just gonna just get that off there just kind of make that last cut there Let's refine this back edge just a wee bit more. So we can take off a little bit more material using the, the finer nippers here, right? These make a, a little bit of a cleaner cut than uh, the good old Zurons, those being our sledgehammers. So there, we have a much, much thinner profile now, right? Much thinner profile. So that's what we're going for. Okay, that's what we're going for. <clears throat> Excuse me. Cleaning the studio. <clears throat> it's kicked up so much dust in this place. It's killing my throat right now. <clears throat> anyway. Um, let's see. Uh, Alex Andrews is over there on uh, YouTube. What's going on, Alex? Man, it is early for you, buddy. Or late. <laughs> um... Ruchlam says, uh, oh, someone tell Freddy about the insult of being confused with Frankie. Hmm? Has nothing to do with Freddy. Has to do with me being called a different name every other week. Did I? Oh, my God. Did I say? Oh, shit. No, Frankie, if I called you something different, dude, that is not what I meant. I'm so sorry, dude. Not even as a joke. That's just... Shit. My bad. Franny works, too. Yeah. Shit. Uh, 
Jesus. That's my it's my fault. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> oh god. <clears throat> All the Julios in the chat. Nice. What's up, Manny? Good to see you, buddy. Uh man, hey, you know what? If you guys um if you guys missed uh mechanism last week i highly suggest that you go back and watch it um it was a very very entertaining four hours yes we went four hours uh not our normal two we went four and uh it was a lot of fun a lot of fun and our boy uh manny came on and graced us with his presence and it was just a whole 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 lot of shenanigans and fun and stuff like that so go back and watch it if you have the chance uh if you got some some time to kill it's worth it it's super funny Super, super funny. All right. Uh, let's see here. We're going to get our little cylindrical grinding bit down here. Now, I'm almost wondering if we pull out the, 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 the big one here. The big. Let's try this one first and see what this does. And if worse comes to worst, we'll go back. We'll go back and install that one. But I want to try this one first because this one, if you can see the the profile, will it show the profile? Yeah. It's it's almost like um it's almost like a, a planing. It's almost like a planer, right? If if you guys have seen a like a wood planer, um it's got three spinning blades, and that's essentially what that looks like a little bit in profile at least. So we're gonna keep it at a <clears throat> fairly low speed and we're gonna go super uh, gentle with this thing and we'll see what uh, what this does. Ooh, ooh. I think this is gonna work. I think this is gonna work, let's see. Yeah. Cause see, this is just just evening everything out and just taking the surface down to uh, basically flat. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I think this I think this bit is gonna work real real nice. All right. Now. The trick is, is just to try and get this as flat as possible. Man. But this is making, this is making pretty short work out of this. This is good so far. Yeah, this is uh, real good so far. Now we're probably gonna have to grind down um, the back edge of the surface and all that. I kind of expected to do that anyway, but uh, so far, man, this, this bit is working really, really well really well. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. See, and the cool thing... Let's stop that for just a second so I can explain here. Um, <clears throat> and look at that. Look at that profile so far. <sighs> Let's see if it'll focus. Yeah. That's getting really nice. It's getting really nice. I'm liking this. So um, the good thing about this little cross piece is that the, the tips are obviously solid plastic. So those are very, very strong. Um, and, uh, the walls of this, uh, of the rest of it is at least one millimeter thick. So that makes that strong as well. Uh, coming up to the point, which then again is solid. Uh, and that, 
that point I would imagine is probably at least a millimeter thick. Um, so all of this is really pretty damn structurally sound. So that's a good thing that that's in our favor at this point um, in terms of uh, how this thing is structured, right? So we can just kind of keep going and uh, get this thing kind of uh, kind of down. Now, what I might do, now nah, we can go a little bit more because there's still, still some meat on that side of the things that we can kind of grind down, right? So let's keep going with this and... Uh, whoa, what happened to the... I don't know. Anyway, uh, Kenneth Sims is pretty sure Tim kind of drunk tonight. No, I'm actually... Actually not. Sweet Tea Tim is not here. I'm just... I'm happy right now. I'm just happy. That's all. Yeah. So, there we go. But thank you for the thought, Kenneth. I appreciate that. All right. We're going to crank up the, the RPMs just a little bit to get a little... Ooh. Yeah. Just to get a little bit more zip in it. Right? Yeah, nice. Is that even? Okay, yeah, we're on. Just trying to get it flat at this point. I'm not trying to get it down to where we need it to be, like at the angle break and everything. I'm just trying to get this flat so that grinding this on our uh, grinding plate will be a lot easier. That looks pretty good. Very nice, very nice. We're getting there. Okay. That looks pretty symmetrical right across the the two side pieces there. Now we just need to get the top part flat and even with the rest of it here. And then we can kind of get the grinding it down. I think that uh, will be good for, yeah, see that's nice. Look at that profile now. Yeah, kids. Yeah, kids. That's, uh, that's money. That's what we want. That's what we want. All right. Um, <clears throat> now that we got now that we have uh, plastic crud all over me. You know, par for the course at this point. Um, let's get caught up here just real quick. Um, Julio says, leave Julio 3 alone. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm still, I'm still upset that if I called Frankie something different, I'm, I apologize. Um, 
That's my bad, dude. Sorry, Frankie. I will try my best not to call you something else. And it was not, trust me, it was not, it was not meant as a joke. Seriously. Um, let's see. Uh, wow. Frankie says, says, smells like short in here. Smells like under 5'7 in here. Hey. Um, Manny, Mr. McDeo, he says, oh shit, is all the Julios in the chat? <laughs> Where's Julionius? Where's, where's Julio too? I don't even know. Anyway. Um... Let's see. Alex Andrews says, yeah, I haven't been to sleep yet. Again. I know that feeling. Uh, Chris Pab says, LOL. All love Frankie. Zoom, zoom, though. Right? Um, let's see. Chris Pab says, but God. Decent four hours. Yeah, it was it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Julio, Mr. Clip and Nub says, I had fun. Bill says, I enjoyed it. I think we all did. It was, it was, that was good. Yeah. Uh, Edward Leonard's over there on YouTube. He says, plus it has bigger radius to match that profile. Yeah. Um, Ruslan says, uh, use the smaller on the cordless. Yeah. I'm going to, um, I'm basically going to switch to, um, the grinding plate at this point and just kind of take it down to, take it down to zero from here, right here on our, uh, Minishima grinding plate that was so nicely given to us here by uh, Mr. Luis Ultraman Dina. He's in the chat, right? Um, Julius Stemsky, like butter. Yeah, yeah, that that bit. Like I said, it's kind of, um, it's good for just shaving down a part. Um, and uh, it, it works really, really well. It's almost like a, like a planer at that point. It's just, it's good for that specific task, right? Um, Zero Kai says, what Dremel bits uh, do you use? Dude, I, I use a variety of Dremel bits, right? Um, like, uh, if you really want to move a ton of plastic, these big boy sanding drums right here, these will move some plastic big time. Um, I used these to um, grind out the uh, circular... Um, circular cutout for uh, the big, uh, the Dormarsh the sword that we made for uh, the shelf Gelgoog. I used this radius and just ground out that plastic with one of these drums and then just kind of went back and finished it off, sanded it and everything like that and it, it made it perfect. Um, you have a smaller little sanding drum which is also good uh, for tighter uh, you know tighter locations and stuff and then I have all of these bits here most of these top ones these taller ones come in this set these smaller ones down here are individually bought most of these smaller ones are Dremel branded um, but these top ones these larger ones are not those um, I forget the name of the company uh, it's a, I think it's a Chinese company or something like that but it's in the links on Amazon um, but I use those, and then of course this is uh, one of the ones that I was just using here. Um, this little guy, and it's uh, it's a nice kind of big cylindrical bit. Um, but instead of fluted like this guy, right? The uh, the blades are straight. That's why it makes it almost like a, like a planer at that point. Um, the flutes are nice for just your general, you know plastic work and stuff like that um what we just use is good for what we just did planing that surface down and getting that nice and smooth and even and all that good stuff so um let's see um blah, 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 blah. let's see where is it where is it uh Handron says i'm using the uh, little tack life on my zero shield at the moment hey there you go good stuff um Let's see. Julius says uh, Tim has that. Uh, Tim has them listed on his Amazon tools. Yeah, the bits that I use that are mostly all on there. Uh, Terry T, Mr. Gundam Yantham, go follow Terry if you haven't. Uh, Terry says my cat seems to be very interested at w at what uh, what you're doing on the screen right now. It seems like the color yellow 
is what caught her attention. <laughs> She's going to go crazy. Uh, Edward Leonard says, I must be wrong. I thought you needed to put a concave radius to match the shield. Um, yeah, but then we're going... What Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, curve this cross uh, around the shield. We're going to bend it around, right? Um, now that we've got all that material off, this is going to become a lot, lot easier to bend. And looking at it now, we're probably going to have to heat this thing up. Um, so, uh, you know, to soften it a little bit, not a big deal. We can do that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, let's see, Julio, uh, Julio, Mr. Clip and Nub says, uh, you got to give Frankie an oh yes since you fucked up his name. Nope, still not going to do it. Oh, yeah. That's all he's getting. That's all he's getting. Anyway, uh, Bill says uh, he has plans to uh, bend it to the shape of the shield. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Ultraman Donna, I think I've got a couple more tools that I'm going to send you, Tim. Uh-oh. Luis, you don't have to do that, but thank you if you do. Appreciate it, buddy. Appreciate that. Greg Blair 88 he says, uh, Hey, Tim, the plate you're using, is there a specific grit to them, uh, like stones or knives? Um, not, not specifically, no. The Minishima grinding plates uh, come, the two that we have, uh, the other one's in the box. This is your medium grit. Um, and this... I'd probably say this is probably close to maybe a 400, between a 400 and 800, maybe like a six or so, something like that, if I was to guess. Um, but it's hard to, it's hard to match sandpaper grit with, with, you know, grinding like a teeth count, right? It's a little, a little hard that way because this leaves a much finer surface than sandpaper does any day of the week. So it's, it's kind of like apples and oranges, right? Kind of like apples and oranges. Uh, Ty Furious is over there on YouTube. He says, have to watch out when using the sanding drums. Uh, if the RPMs are too high, you can melt plastic. Yeah, and honestly, it happens even at low RPMs. That stuff just rips through it. But if you're trying to move material, melt it. Doesn't matter. Just get it out of the way. Um, let's see. Charles Dodge says, Tim's having a little trouble with curves in both directions. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe. I think it looks flat. Um, Bill says, uh, yeah, I got some bits going out, uh, with some of the latest care packages. Nice. Including one similar to what you just used. Now, a nice, uh, carving bit. Nice. Dude, Bill, you, you're a good guy, man. Bill's, Bill's good people, man. For real, for real. Uh, Hulu says LMA, LMFAO thank you uh, Ty Furious Tim uh, is the threading on the Tack Life rotary tool the same as the Dremel I'm wondering if the Dremel keyless chuck works on it ha 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 great question Mr. Ty Furious yes and it's not necessarily threading um, it's the it's the chuck or the collet that goes in here right so this uh, kind of brass-colored collet, this is what comes with the uh, Tack Life, right? Now, this here, this collet, is one of the um, multi-collets that come with the Dremel uh, multi-pack of different sized collets. And, hey, same exact size. Same exact sizing. Um, that screws down. And yes, it holds the exact same bits and everything. It's great. It's absolutely great. That's why I love this little thing. Um, because it already holds all of, all of my Dremel bits that I already have. It just works. It works really well. So if you have a, a full-size Dremel... You can swap bits the whole nine yards. You'll be perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, Bill says, yeah, I got some bits going out. Oh, I already read that. Uh, hey, Nozaku boy, Mr. James. What's going on, James? He says, hey, mates. 
What's going on, buddy? Uh, Bill says medium is six hundred. Fine is either eight or a thousand, and course is like four hundred, I believe. Okay, that does make sense. That does make sense. He's talking about the grinding plates. Um, Charles Dodge says a complex concave is like the reverse of a sphere. Uh, it would curve to fit the up and down and left to right of the shield. Yeah. That's kind of... Well, see, the thing is, is that the curvature of the shield this way is much, much more drastic, that you, you know, as you can see, than this way, right? So we really only have to curve the, the two sides, right? That's really all we're going to have to do because we might, we might have to curve the long way just a little bit. But, I mean, we can just press that to fit and that'll be perfectly fine. This way obviously needs a little bit more TLC when it comes to curving, you know, the side points and everything, right? So that's even... Doing something like that probably wouldn't even, wouldn't be needed, right? So, anyway. Uh, William Wim says, this is the Tack Life bit set I bought for my Dremel. It has four different size collets with it. Um, well, the, the links don't post, man. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. Edward Leonard says, uh, you won't have to heat it if you put a slight concave radius in the center. Uh, in the X and Y direction. Yeah, yeah, well, see, the thing is, I want everything, I want all the tapers to match, the, the top tapers and everything. And if we did that, we'd have less material kind of in this middle section uh, than we would in, in the other sections, and then that taper just would not, it, it wouldn't match, it wouldn't lay perfectly all the way across. You know what I mean? So... That's that's kind of where we're going. So, all right. So we're just going to start leveling this thing out. And let's see what we've got so far. What we might want to do is we might want to start this on sandpaper. Uh, Chris Barnes says, lay the sandpaper over the shield. Uh, yeah, but still, you wouldn't get the... Like I said, the problem that you run into is that the, the angles from here to here are like a fixed position, right? If you put more curvature in this middle section here that's going to cause that's going to cause you to lose a lot of that a lot of that material in there and that's going to cause a difference in profile i don't want that that's what i'm trying to avoid at this point so if we sand this flat we heat this up we curve this to the shape of it 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 has that that um uh that constant that constant um uh, uh, height and width and angle and everything. Everything stays the same. It just curves around that that profile. Make sense? We learning. We learning. This is all about learning. Um, let's see. Uh, buh, 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 buh. let's see. It won't matter. It will help. Edward says. Uh, like I said, still it, you'll lose that little bit in the center. You know. You'll lose that little bit in the center, and then the profile will just look off, in my opinion. Um, William Williams uh, says, all right, I will send it to you to see if you want to uh, add it to your shopping list. Uh, oh, the four different size collets. Dude, I, I have something exactly like that already on the Amazon link. So, yeah. And, and Bill says, yeah, pretty sure he has the Dremel brand collets on Amazon already. Yeah, no, I do. I do. Alex Andrew says, every time you pick up, uh, pick that thing up, I feel it's going to snap like a twig. No, dude, this is actually uh, rather, it, yeah, well, it's, it's thin, and I'm not going to sit here and bend it and play with it, but um, it's actually fairly robust and strong at this point. So um, that's why I said we're 
we're probably now looking at this going to have to heat this middle section up and curve these two uh, bits down here because um, these top points are going to be very, very strong laterally, right? Very, very strong. If you think of a pyramid, um, if you try, if you tried to bend that this way, that top section is either going to be your strongest point or it's going to break, right? So that's why we've got to heat this thing. We've got to make that plastic a little malleable to bend over this curve, right? That's all we got to do. We just got to make it, just got to, just, just got to coax it into position. That's all, right? Just got to get a little, just a little heat in there and just got to coax it into position. That's it. That's it. Um... Let's see. Mikkel's over there. He says it's about them curves. It's true. Hannon says a, a hairdryer uh, set on the lowest is perfect temperature to bend it safely. Um, I don't have a hairdryer readily available. Uh, and it also, shit, now that I look at it, it, it also looks like my um, my heating element for my vacuum former is got crap on it. Shit. So we may not be able to bend this thing tonight. Might have to do it off air, which might actually be better. Just saying. It's not that I don't love you guys. It just might be less, less um, of a hassle because obviously, you know, if I'm gonna do it, I need to, I need to make sure that it's on screen and blah blah blah. And it's just like I gotta, gotta lean over like this, and it's just a pain in the butt, right? But looking at this way, yeah, that's freaking strong. I can't. There's no bending that without breaking it. There's no bending that without breaking. So, but what we can do is we can try to get this thing as flat as possible, right? So, with that being said, let's let's pull this guy. Shit, get over there. Let's pull this guy out here. This is just a. Uh, this is just kind of like my sanding sanding platform here. This is a piece of MDF with uh, what is this? 600, 800, maybe 400. I don't know. Something like that in there. And we're just going to uh, sand this this puppy down. And we're just basically rotating it 90 degrees. Just every few uh, every few seconds here. Now that it's kind of getting nice and flat, the bevels are starting to disappear, and it's becoming a little bit more difficult to pick up. But yeah, that's starting to look really, really nice. Now, the problem is, is we've got a little bit more, uh, a little bit more meat on this front section here. So I'm going to have to kind of focus my energies on this. front on getting this front section here. That's going to be a little a little bit more challenging because we need to put the pressure right here. Um, but it, it's it as you can see it. Well, we could probably do it this way. Let's try that. Not ideal, but it's a way. It's a bit better. That's a bit better. Let's see, let's see how flat we are on this thing. Whew. That's actually really nice and flat. Look at that. Let's get our one, two, three blocks out here and really, really put it to the test, right? All right. Machinist one, two, three blocks, so we know they're machine dead flat, right? Ooh. Yeah. That is That is scary flat. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Good to go. All right. So, let's continue to focus on this bit here.
Bill says pot of uh, or boil of wa bowl of water. Yeah, boiling water. That'll probably uh, that would soften it too, no doubt. Yeah. All right, let's get that off of there. Let's put this back over on the shelf. Let's get our grinding plate out again. Now this will, this should be able to get us just super, super, super flat. Yeah, that's pretty dang nice. And there's that profile we want. Nice and even all the way through front to back. Side to side looks really nice. looking really really quite good okay that should probably do it for flatness that's a nice really really nice thin profile we've maintained the look of the cross right both ways looking good that's nice and equal on both sides. Profile's nice. It's exactly where we need it to be, you guys. Exactly where we need it to be. Yeah. Uh, Edward Leonard says, one, two, three blocks equals dead on balls accurate. That's an industry term, by the way. <laughs> Only a few people will understand that. Just saying. Um, let's see. Hey. Here's Craig Flynn, Mr. Flynn Burger. He says, Good day, Tim. He says, Good day, gang. What's going on, Craig? Hey, everybody. Craig, Craig's dog is home. Out of the vets. Out of the woods, right? Out of the woods, Craig? It looks like he had a bucket on his head, but that's to be expected, so. <clears throat> but Craig's dog had got in the trash and ate some nasty stuff so uh he had to rush him to the doggy hospital or something then he came home and then he had like an infection or something he says out of the woods that's awesome cone of shame yeah i bet cone of shame that'll teach her to get in the trash that's for damn sure <laughs> All right, so um, what we want to do next, since we can't bend that cross uh, right this second, what I want to do is start to build up um, part of the uh, the border around this thing, right? Because the uh, the normal shield the that we're kind of almost copying from uh, has a distinct higher border all the way around the perimeter and everything. So we want to definitely uh, mimic that look, right? <clears throat> and um, so I think that's I think that's what we're gonna try to get up to right now. Now, one thing that I wanna see something here. Let's first do our due diligence and let's get these little receiver holes let's get those beveled out so it makes assembly and disassembly so very much easier so this pops right in there all right see and then you have that look and then obviously there's your your kind of finished look as far as the shield goes, you know, on the outside, right? But on the inside here, <clears throat> that's there. And then where did it go? Here it is. We'll bevel that on the inside for easier, easy assembly and disassembly. And then this just kind of pops right in here eh. see I got this shield from I think I got this from Justin 
if I'm not mistaken, and he did not uh, denub and clip the parts and all that jazz, right? So he just kind of just kind of winged it. So we need to. Oh, that's not the knife I want. So we need to uh, clean some of these nubs off here so this thing can fit properly. There we go. That should work. And let's get that right there. That popped in. All right. So and there's your back profile on this uh, on this shield. Let's get this beveled there. So again, it makes assembly and disassembly that much easier. Ooh, and I almost forgot these two there and there so we pop that in and there's essentially your your finished look for for the most part right for the most part uh, we've got some again we got we gotta clean some nubs off here that Justin left not a big deal. He uh, he let me have this, and he uh, he was just like, "Look, you know, I didn't clean the nubs or anything," and I was just like, "Man, eh, no problem. I can do it. Easy, right? I can do it." So to make this thing fit better, we obviously have to clear these nubs away so that the fitment is. Good to go, right? Okay. There's that. Even that out. Even that out. Now this should go together a little bit more flush, right? Yeah, much better. Much, much better. All right, so there essentially is your kind of finished product, your finished shield, right? Right there. Now, alternatively, this is the old school, the old school type of shield from the, uh, I think this is from the GM Quell. As you can see, there's a definite shape difference uh, and size difference, right? Um, I like this one a whole hell of a lot better than this one. Obviously, this is old school and everything. Um, and you've got a lot less going on in the back area, right? Like a lot less. So, um, I was contemplating on using this, but then Justin gave me this shield. So, I figured why not use the... The new stuff, right? Now, the thing that I'm looking at, and the thing that I'm wondering at this point, are these two little circular bits up here. Because <clears throat> from what it looks like, we're going to have to use probably about two millimeter uh, strip all the way around this to make that uh, to make that lip. Right, and then we'll have to, you know, bring it up here, bring it here, boom, boom, up this way. Now the main question is right there. You see how that two millimeter border runs right into that that little circular area there? I'm not a huge fan of that. I'll be honest with you, not a huge fan of that. So I'm almost wondering, maybe we fill that in. And just have this be nice and flat and uh, just plain. I, I, I honestly, now that I, I think about it, I think it's a great option. And um, I think it would get us a little bit closer in terms of aesthetics uh, to the old school 
uh, Verka shield and stuff like that. So I think that's I think that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. Um, because I I just I don't like where these are placed. If you look on the old one here, they were placed a little a little bit farther in, right? They had a little bit more negative space around them, where these don't have a whole hell of a lot of negative space, right? So um, I think I think yeah, I think we're gonna I think we're gonna fill these in, pop this out, keep the two little kind of bits in the back, right? Because that just that fills that up, and that actually kind of looks good. I, I don't I don't mind that look, but. Um, for the actual front section, uh, we're gonna fill those in. And we're probably gonna go ahead and fill these in with a mixture of um, styrene sheet, maybe some epoxy putty, depending on, I don't know, depending on what we wanna do. Um, first things first though, we need to, we need to grind down these little circular bits there and make all this kind of work, right? So let's get zoomed in Whoop. right there. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to pull out our little mini Dremel, little baby Dremel, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to, uh, there it is, get our little, one of our little circular uh, cylindrical bits in here. But first, we got to get the right collet in this thing. Just right there. There. Put this guy back. Get that guy there. Actually, you know what? We're going to use a smaller one for this. And we're going to set him in there. Lock this down very nicely, and then uh, find our piece because it jumped out of the frame here. And uh, we're just going to go to work grinding these down to uh, basically these these angle breaks on this thing, so it's not too too bad. We need to let's first get the nubs off here, just like that. One on this side. These aren't too terrible. I think, yeah, I think I got this from Justin. I can't remember, honestly, now that I think about it. But I think it was Justin. I could be wrong, though. Totally could be wrong. Anyway. Crank that, crank that little some bitch up to three. That's hitting it about maybe 5,000 RPM. And let this thing do its work, right? This, this thing is great. I love this thing. Watch this, you guys. Oh, it just grinds this plastic like it's butter. Like uh, Julius said before, just like butter. So we just basically want to take this down to flat, right? This is a such a great, great little tool. I'm so freaking happy with this thing. You have no idea. Like, um, I was I was skeptical of this little thing. I'm not gonna lie. I was super skeptical of this thing. Um, but after working with it, man, it's it's legit. Even after, you know, uh, uh, like Handrin had, had swore by it and everything like that, I'm just like, I don't know, man. Like, I don't, I, just, I don't know. I'm not, I wasn't sold on it, right? I just was not sold on it. But then once you got it in your hands and you started using this thing, <sighs> telling you what, this right here is the perfect rotary tool 
for uh, scale modeling. I mean, it's not your it's not your big powerhouse Dremel. You're not going to move a ton of material with this thing, um, but you're going to move enough to where you keep the precision. And that's kind of the big drawback with um, with the big kind of traditional Dremels is that they um, rotate at such high speeds like the lowest one lowest speed is about 5,000 and um, actually I think this may be even lower because this does not um, melt the plastic it 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 is grinding the plastic off this is not melting in any way shape or form um, so uh, that's one of the just a huge, huge, huge pluses with this thing is that it spins slow enough for the bit to actually do its job rather than melt the plastic, right? Here we go. Okay. So we've got both of these pretty much down to flat. Let's check to see how this looks on here, right? Okay. So there's that. Now, what I want to do is I want to grind this down to essentially be a below this blue plastic level, right? I want it to be below that. Now, to do that, I need to mark on the actual part itself here with our uh, little general scribing tool. And that's basically going to become our demarcation line of where uh, to take our grind down to, right? And I'll show you kind of what I mean here in just a, a second. Let me get this one marked here as well. Okay. So, let's get... get this piece popped off there so now you can see kind of that that scribed in line that's where we want to take the the grind down to we want to take it down to that line um, so that this piece is sitting below the surface of the actual shield right we want this to be below the shield because what, we're, what we essentially and ideally want to do is we want these to be empty so that we can backfill these with plastic sheet, um, super glue, epoxy putty, whatever floats our boat at this point. Um, and then once we pop this section back onto here, um, that'll just basically camouflage everything for us. So uh, this surface will be completely nice and smooth. Back here we don't have to worry about it so much because this um, will basically, uh, as Adam Savage says, hide our crimes, right? So that's that's the idea. That's the idea. Let's get caught up with the uh, chat here real quick because I know um, I've been um, neglecting you guys here. Let's start over with um, the uh, Mecha Army Facebook group. Uh, Steven Eckert actually transitioned over to uh, over there. He says, I'm not sure if it's possible right now, but there is a cooking technique called uh, sous vide. Uh, you cryovac the food, uh, or in this instance, Gundam part, and you put it in water in a water bath that you control the temperature and have it slowly heat. Uh, I haven't done it myself, but I think it could have uh, its applications in Gundam in the Gundam world. Uh, message me and I can explain it more. No, I've I've I trust me. I've seen uh, the sous vide um, technique and everything. Um, simply because it's vacuum 
uh, you know, vacuum pack, vacuum bag, or whatever, um, I would be hesitant with this fragile of a piece because you never know what that that vacuum is going to do. You know what I mean? So that that would be that would be my number one concern. Um, just you know, heating this up in a in a pot of boiling water. Um, you know, just kind of dipping it in there with tweezers like this and just kind of getting it nice and soft. No danger to this at all. Or even just heating it in a, you know, over top of a heating element like, a, um, you know, my heating element for uh, my vacuum former, right? Because that that heats it evenly um, and uh, really, really nice, uh, really, really nicely, yeah. Um, let's see, Mecca Whitney is over there on the uh, Mecca Army Facebook group. He wants to know what the name of the uh, rotary tool is. This is the TAC Life Focus Camera. There we go. Uh, the TAC Life, what is it? PCG01B. Um, and uh, Mecca, if you look over on this side in the description on uh, the Facebook listing, uh, there's an Amazon link over there. And this tool is listed in that Amazon link. So you can actually go pick that up through that. I've, like I said, I've already curated it, uh, that page and everything, and it has this tool in there already. So makes it easy. Um, so anywho, uh, let's see. Getting back to um, Facebook here. Um, ah, perfect. We have a question. Hey. Uh, Alex Andrews says, "What? Uh, so what does beveling the peg holes do? Uh, it makes it easier for assembly and disassembly. Um, you know how people kind of cut some of the pegs at a 45 degree angle? Um, it basically reduces the amount of material being shoved into that, that peg hole. Well, beveling it basically does the same thing, but in a better efficient way because you're getting the entirety of that peg um, smashed into that peg hole. <clears throat> um, but you're getting a little bit less of it. So when it comes to um, pulling the parts apart and everything like that, um, it makes it so, so very much easier. But when you go to glue it, you slather the glue in there, that glue squeeze out forms back on to um, the peg and everything, fills in that beveled area, then it's completely 100% solid at that point. That's why I like to do that, uh, do it that way. And I've, I've just, I've kind of done it that way for years and it just makes sense. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah. And then Charles Dodge and, uh, Sam L basically both gave, uh, correct answers. Uh, Charles says it makes it easier to take it back apart. Sam L says makes it easier to assemble and disassemble. Great job guys. Hey, gear two, three, seven with the sub. Thank you. You get one of these. Boom! Yeah! I like it. I likes it. I dig it. Hell yeah. Um, <clears throat> with the Twitch Prime. Nice! I like the Twitch. I like the Twitch Prime. The Prime! Anyway, uh, Edward Leonard says, Dogs are so dumb, I don't know how they could have survived without humans. <laughs> Glad your dog is okay, Flynnberger. Yeah. He says, thanks, mate. Uh, she is very cute, but also very stupid stupid. Aww. It's part of the cuteness, though. Uh, Edward says, LOL, I have an English bulldog that barks at random new shit in the yard. <laughs> That's great. Uh, Julius Dempsey says, I think cutting off uh, the top two horn parts of the shield would also make it look a little more like the old school shield, make it flat across the top. Uh, yes, I agree. Get rid of the two circles. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't necessarily know about cutting the the two tops of the you know the two horns off because you have the the two the section down here so it kind of aesthetically goes together right it just it fits and honestly i i just like that look so now nah, we keeping it we keeping it but thank you thank you sarge uh heron says i've been a happy camper since i've been using it uh last year yeah the tack life little baby Dremel. Um, Edward Leonard says, I have one and love it. So do I, man. Uh, Ultraman Dino says, do you have that tool in your list? Yes, it is in there. Uh, ever since I got it from Bill, man, yeah, it done. It's in there. 
Hannon says, Tack Life needs to sponsor me. Right? Dude, contact him and see. Ultraman Dinah says, just added it to my cart. Thanks again. Dude, no, thank you, brother. Uh, Bill says, nice. I know there has been a few of them getting ordered recently. There has been. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Ruslam says, sous vide works off the idea of heating at extremely low temps over time. Plastic needs a higher temp. That's a good, yeah, that's actually a good call, too, because plastic... Uh, at least styrene, I think the melting point is like 220. Some, <coughs> uh, this dust is killing me right now, you guys. And having two streams in one day has not helped either, uh, talking the entire time. Um, but yes, I agree. 220 is right around melting point for plastic. So, um, you need to get it at least to around 200 ish to, you know, really get that nice kind of droop. Oh, parched. Parched is the word. Anyway, um, Superset5 over there on Twitch, he says, hmm, that moment when you find plastic strip you didn't know you had. Hey, even better. Uh, Ultraman Dinah says, I've added uh, two more tools from Tim's list to my Amazon cart. Thank you. Thank you, Luis. Um, Ruslam says, nice, and he should be adding the angle stop soon after the stream ends. Yes, yes, I will. Alexander says, uh, so would I just need a pin vise and the correct driver slash head tool for it? Yeah, at, uh, for the beveling. Yeah, dude, and that's really it. Um, now, mind you, since there's a variety of peg holes um, within Gundam models, I do use kind of a variety of um, different bits, right? Let me kind of show you just real quick just a small ish sampling of uh, kind of what I use so these are these are some of the bits that I particularly use um, and some of them some of the some of the peg holes that you run into especially on like the bigger like mobile armors and um, things of that nature are even bigger than these um bigger than these bits so th for those shit uh you may even have to break out one of these bad boys and um this is a countersink bit for uh woodworking and this is a, a three quarter inch countersink bit now mind you i've only had to use this like a handful of times don't go running out to your local hardware store and, and trying to pick one of these up because chances are you probably won't need it um this little variety, I think, is is probably going to suit 99% of your needs. Um, these little ones, obviously. Um, the uh, Let's see. This little guy for the teeny, teeny, tiny little, um, little holes, like uh, this little guy right back here. This one worked perfect for that. Um, but, yeah, these are kind of the, a variety of uh, what I use. And... Um, it just it it works so freaking well um, that I just you know I, I I recommend that method um, always always above snipping the pegs at a forty five degree angle or whatever because uh, you're just asking for trouble if you snip to that peg too far back you're sol um, now one good rule of thumb. One good rule of thumb when you are grinding out the peg holes, uh, 10 rotations, 10 rotations max. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 on the pin vise, and that's it. Stop. If it's a very, very shallow hole, go five. But normal ones, about 10. This one was pretty shallow, so I only did five on this. Um, but your normal run of the mill peg holes are usually going to be 10 rotations, and then it's, it's golden. So, just from experience, that's, yeah, kind of what uh, what I do. So, as long as you follow that, you're golden. All right, <clears throat> so, um, Scuffle says, welcome to the Mecha Army Gear 327. Yeah, and he look, he, he used the emote and everything. I love it. So, if you guys didn't know, over on Twitch, the emotes um, got approved that everybody was suggesting... Uh, last week, so uh, Mech Army is the tier one. Um, <clears throat> let's see, tier two was the um, 
was the uh, airdrop, the um, Fighting Cox insignia for uh, the uh, 67th Tactical Mobile Suit Squadron. Uh, tier 3 is the Grim Reapers. So, yeah. I don't know why I chose those. They just seemed logical to me. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Gear327, or 237 over there on Twitch. He says, always enjoy high-quality Gumpa content. Keep it up. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Greek Knockers with the Mech Army uh, emotes. Nice. Um, let's see. Super Set 5, I say keep the two horns, but rework them to resemble the window thingy on the RX shield. Uh, I'm not too keen on the whole that whole that whole window thingy anyways. Um, and that's essentially what the, the cutout is. You know, so... I like the shield, guys. Just trust me. Go with it. Trust me. <laughs> um, Ultraman Dyna says, um, Ruslam, angle stops? What angle stops? Um, I must have joined the stream after he showed them, maybe? No, I showed him uh, last... What was it? Friday... Friday day stream. Friday early, early episode um, for those. So, yeah. Um, they're really cool. Where, where did I put them? Are they over here? Oh, here they are. I forgot which shelf I put them on. Um, but it's these little guys right here that that uh, Mr. Bill was nice enough nice enough uh, to send over. These little metallic um, angle gauges, right? It goes from a five degree all the way into you know ten degree or five degree increments, all the way up to your ninety degree angles there and everything you know like i said five degrees in between so uh these are really really cool and they come in this nice little this nice little kind of you know vinyl wallet and everything so you don't lose them at all nice little sleeves and pouches and everything and uh bill gave me some good advice since those are a little on the smaller side if you put those down on the chopper um cutting mat and then you put the uh chopper guides on top of them and you lock that down he said that holds them really really nice and solid so i'm going to try that when i need um kind of an off angle um and that should work that should honestly work really really well yeah yeah uh alex says thank you kindly for answering tim my pleasure man my pleasure uh dt warriors over there on on youtube he says what's up bro what's going on man Thank you for coming back. Um, let's see. Ultraman Dyna. Ultra, uh, he says, interesting. How do you use them? Um, Edward says, more machinist tools. Yeah, no. Um, so they're just exactly like our our angle gauges for uh, the chopper, right? Because you, um, you got your 30 degree, your 45 degree, your 60 degree, and then obviously your 90 degree um you know, angle stops for uh, for the chopper, right? These are the, the little ones that, that Bill sent. These are the exact same concept, right? Um, you lock these into your chopper, and then you put, um, you know, like a strip of, put a, a strip of plastic up there, chop that down, and then you've achieved your 45-degree angle or whatever angle um, that you're essentially using at that point, right? So same concept, same concept, um, just at a five degree increment all the way from five to, uh, five to 90, which is really cool. Really cool. Um, Chuck over there on YouTube, he says, Tim, do you know if there is anywhere I can get these angled things? Yes, I will be adding them to the Amazon link below right after the stream. Um, Bill sent me the link um, but I think it's on my other account, so I'm going to have to switch over, and I don't want to necessarily do it while on stream, so give me a few minutes, give me like 5-10 minutes, um, and then refresh the um, the Amazon link below on, um, on YouTube in the description, they'll be there, they will be there, yes sir. Um, Mike R says, as a CNC programmer, I get a lot of tools for my scratch building from my shop, yeah, I mean, that. I mean, that just makes absolute sense. And being a, a CNC programmer, dude, you guys are going to have, like, top shelf tools too, right? Um, way, like, super, super accurate. Like, um, 
uh, what are those uh, super accurate um, calipers? The M Mina Mikoyasu or whatever they're called? I forget the name of it, but I'm sure uh, I'm sure Mike R probably knows exactly what I'm talking about. It's the 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 really high high precision um, and high cost digital calipers. Honestly, dude, though for um, for plastic modeling. $15 U-Bond is work good for me, right? Um, so, but man, ah, me, me to, me to Toyo. Yes, I was close. Sort of, right? I was close, sort of. Um, and then obviously the one, two, three blocks are way more highly precisioned and all that stuff is like super, super accurate. So, um, the stuff on Amazon, perfectly acceptable for what we do in modeling, but man, Mike R has got a hookup with the with the good stuff, right? Yeah. Um, Ultraman Dino says, "Dang, Tim, you're gonna make me buy more tools." <laughs> LOL. But thank you very much. You know what? Invest in tools. Skip the kits. Invest in tools. You can get the kits later. A good tool set is where is really where it is, because if you look at like um, fine woodworkers and craftsmen and stuff like that and i'm sure mike r as a cnc programmer can probably attest to this too the quality of your tools and the 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 precision of them makes the job um makes the job easier which makes it more fun which makes everything better and it's just it just comes out just good it just comes out good but this is the this is the kicker number one you got to know how to use them and you have to have imagination to be able to use them properly so tools are only as good as the hands that they're uh they're held by so keep that in mind too um let's see zero kai says uh great i Chisel disciplined my way to a cut on my hobby knife. Oof. Not great. Hey, Ghost of Zeon. Scotty, Mr. SMS paints himself. He's over there on YouTube. He says, hey, Tim, what's going on, Scotty? Dude, I was cleaning up my um, my studio, and um, um, I was reorganizing paints and everything, and still have the SMS that you sent me, and it's just like, yo, I need to use this purple somewhere, because that purple shade is just like, perfect right it's just this nice shade of purple and then the teal dude the teal not many companies make true a true teal that's that's money dude for real and here if you guys don't know what the hell i'm talking about in terms of sms check it out these right here these these are the money paints yeah Look at that. Look at how nice that purple is. Look at how nice that teal is, right? That's just so... We gotta sh really kind of shake it up so you can kind of get the, get the idea, right? And I still haven't... I still need to shake these up a lot because there's a, there's a lot of pigment on the bottom there. But, look at that. Obviously, that's a little dark because that's more thinner than anything. But, that's kind of what you're getting out of these two so nice but yeah you guys sms it's the stuff and scotty mr ghost of zeon here that's who makes them yeah and if you don't know where to get them um if you're in australia obviously go to scotty order them directly from sms or your local uh stockist down there right but if you're in the u.s you can get them at usa gundam store yeah um let's see um Charles Dodge says, uh, well, I'm glad now that I accidentally placed my support Tim's new job Amazon order without my gift cards. I can get those too. Aw, thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Um, that's awesome. Hamden says, uh, forget about kits, get tools. Preach. Yeah. Mike R., he says, you always need the right tools for the right job. Yes, I concur 100%. Um... Let's see. Sam L says, yep, I've been enjoying it a lot more now that I've got some good tools. Yeah. 
it, it does make the job enjoyable, more enjoyable, I should say. Charles Dodd says, yeah, the better the tool, the better the, the results, uh, and it's easier too. Yeah. Ruslam says, unless the kit is limited production. Well, there are always exceptions. Chuck says, I bought an X-Acto knife all the way back in 2007 for model cars. When I started doing Gunpla, I used the same knife, and it served me ever, uh, well ever since, only to have to change the blades. And you know what? The funny thing is, is that I've had this X-Acto handle um, since I started as well. And um, this, I don't even think they make, I don't even know if they make the steel handles anymore like this. Because this thing has got some weight to it, right? Um, but yeah, invest in good tools. Invest in good tools. Um, Edward Dunn says, uh, I, I programmed CNC machines and wired uh, EDM machines and am retired. I had a machine shop in my garage but made the mistake of selling most of my tools. Ah, oh, man. Uh, Scotty goes to Zeon says, ha ha, yeah, man, use those paints. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely. Uh, per Zaku girl, there she is, Jody. She says, um, uh, do, do a wing like mine, Tim. Uh, all purple was SMS. Dude, the SMS purple is just awesome because I have not seen a purple shade like it in any other uh, shade. Like um, the like the Tamiya purple is darker, and then the Mr. Hobby is even darker than that. Right? It's like a deep, deep purple. It's like Prince and the the New Revolution purple. Um, and if you're old enough to remember that, then thank you. Uh, but the uh, what is it? The um, Gundam color purple is lighter than the SMS purple. So it's like right in that sweet spot, right? That's why I like it. That's why I like it so much. Um, let's see. Uh, BTE over there on um, Twitch, he says those, the Australian ones. Yes, they are. They are, SMS uh, is made uh, all in Australia. Yes, that is correct. That is correct. Chuck over there on YouTube says, I got an $8 tool kit that has a lot of great tools. We're going to switch to uh, camera one because we're going to wrap it up here in just a second. Um, that has a lot of great tools. I've been using the nippers in it for over a year now. Hey, you know what? If it works, stick with it. Um, Ruslam says, Exacto is still a great knife, and if you know how to use it, it offers tons of options. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, my personal choice, obviously, is NT Cutter, just because I like the little blades and everything like that, and it, it gives me, um, uh, it, it gives me better precision because the blades are, um, you know, a, a different angle. They're 45 degree blades rather than 30. Um, but that's my just, that's just my personal preference doesn't have to be yours. Um, Edward Leonard says, got to try those paints. Dude, you do. They're all pre-thinned and everything. They're ready to go right out uh, into your airbrush. They're great. Um, Ruslam says, yeah, we need more distributors of SMS. William Wilm says, I'm going to order some SMS when I get stateside again. Scotty, there you go, buddy. Yeah. Um, Henry says, my exacto handles from the early 2000s. I think mine is too. And honestly, I don't even know where I got this from. I think it was laying around the house when I first started to get into scale modeling and stuff. I don't even know if I bought it, honestly. It just showed up. Just uh, Bill says, uh, nope, modern X-Acto is aluminum blade. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Um, where's that shitty aluminum? Yeah, like this, right? This is like, a, I'm, I'm not on camera too. This, this is the shitty aluminum one. And you can see the color difference between the aluminum and the steel, right? This is the steel one. This is the aluminum one. This is heavy. This is not. This sucks. That's why I only use this with, like, the saw blades and stuff like that. Aluminum. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Scuffles over there on Twitch. He says, uh, invest in good tools and you'll only have to buy once and cry once. Wow. People don't realize a dull cutting tool can be more dangerous than a sharp one. Oh, <laughs> trust me, I know. Uh, Ruslam says, new power generation for the win. There you go. Uh, Alex Andrews says, I'm assuming SMS paints aren't really available in Europe and the UK. Um, Scotty, I think you, does, are you able to ship internationally? As long as it has like, as long as the countries have the, like the MDS or, or does the MDS come from you? I don't remember. I don't know. Anyway, um, Scotty, 
the ghost of Xeon in the chat would definitely be the one uh, to answer that since he is the owner of SMS. Um, Mike R says, nice, never programmed on EDM machines, mostly mills, lathes, um, Mazak, Mazak, I don't know how to pronounce that, and fancy and some robotics, nice. Uh, BT over there on Twitch, he says, uh, I used to have st the steel one when I got into architecture in 2005, lost it some time ago. Oh, man. Um, yeah, the, the SMS are great. The SMS are great. I just need to find a, uh, a project to use them on, right? So, I don't know. I might use the white on, on this Gundam, now that I think about it. I might do that. Anyway. All right. So, uh, you guys, it's 12.15. It's uh, quarter, quarter after the hour. 15 minutes after we uh, normally end the show. Um, so we're going to cut it there. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, definitely come on back tomorrow, 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern U.S. time. We're going to work, continue working on our SD uh, Team SD build, right? Um, that's the one that I'm working on converting a uh, an SD and a high grade kind of melding those two together and we're we're making some pretty nice progress on that um so come on back tomorrow for that come on back wednesday again during the day and then uh for the nighttime stream at uh, 10 p.m on wednesday we'll be back working on gbwc and everything too um but uh yeah so guys if you want to cop one of these awesome uh airdrop chibi shirts uh hit up www.chadamecca.com hit the store button up at the top you'll find this shirt many more hats prints of all the models and everything that i've built and just a whole bunch of other cool stuff on there go load up um if you are interested in any of the tools and materials that we worked with here tonight especially this little guy this little tack life little baby Dremel. This thing is awesome. Um, there's an Amazon link below here on Twitch and YouTube. That's that side, actually, if you're watching on Facebook. Um, and um, it's all curated on an Amazon page and everything like that. I do get a bit of a commission based off the stuff that you buy, but it does not increase the cost for you. Uh, and it goes to help out me, help out the streams, and kind of fuel our endeavors going forward because we're getting... We're going to get in deep here very very soon you guys oh it's gonna be exciting um but uh aside from that if you need uh kits or paints like the sms paints from scotty um you can definitely hit up uh our good friends right down here at usa gundam store um adam and the fine crew down there will definitely have what you need uh like mecha decal sheets one and two they are shipping right now they are in stock go get you some of those yeah all right, you guys, so come on back tomorrow for the afternoon stream. Come on back on Wednesday for the afternoon and evening stream. <clears throat> Demons. And then uh, on Thursday, just the early episode, and then Friday, early episode, and then another episode of Mechanism, uh, where we cut up and just just shenanigans and just being us being stupid, basically. Um, Sweet T. Tim might make an appearance. I don't know. It's a judgment call. Anyway, uh, you guys have a wonderful rest of your night or day, wherever you may be. I will see you tomorrow afternoon. All right, take care, wash your hands, go build something cool. All right, see you guys. <laughs>